Howdy folks, I'm Helen Norton and I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself so you know who you'll be working with if you take one of my courses. I've been a professional artist for 30 years and I live in Perth, West Australia in a lovely sunny Mediterranean climate with my two silly dogs and a fluffy old cat. I established my career in the northwest of this state before living in various interesting places in Australia and overseas. I'm known in Australia as a narrative painter. I paint in oils, acrylic and watercolour, in fact any medium, as long as the medium serves my creative juices and that's all that matters to me. I've made a very good living out of selling my work and running a solid business based on printing or publishing my paintings into prints and turning that into a successful online business. I've never received an art grant in my life and I know that sounds like a bit of pride there but I've managed to pay off a lovely home uh, several times and raise my son single-handedly with the income I've earned from my art. I've painted and exhibited all over the world if you want to look it all up you can look at my CV uh, on my website for all those credentials. But what only matters to you now is that with my 60 solo exhibitions under my belt, I can lead you through this process as far as skills are concerned. I have painted a lot and I've sold a lot of work. So I know how to make work that's saleable as well as enjoyable. I'm not just a hardcore commercial artist. I wouldn't do anything that I didn't like doing. I'm very stubborn like that. And I know the pivotal points where people said, oh, why don't you just paint more of these because they sell? And I had to change because I simply needed to change as a creative person. While most of us want to try and keep our feet on the ground and our expectations realistic about becoming a recognised artist, there's far too much tall poppy chopping going on for my liking around whether or not you can make a living as an artist. Yes, it does require having a vision, a goal or a dream, but it's not impossible. It's really very simple and yet it's got a lot of moving parts like any business and it needs a bit of a plan. Did I say business? Yes, I did. And that's the difference between artists that make it and those that don't. As far as the actual art part, the painting that is, it's all about doing the work, staying the course long enough, often without praise, in the back room to manifest something significant. But most successful artists know that they probably spend as much time doing the business side, if not more than the painting. It's about sorting out your head, really. It's saying this, I can be an artist, but I also need to attend to the business of how I interfaced my art with the world. In other words, being realistic about becoming an artist is about being able to walk and chew gum at the same time and being able to switch roles or switch brains when you do. I mean, who likes putting out the rubbish or doing the dishes? But we do it because it makes way for what really matters. I believe you can make your art career work and be viable because ultimately, one of the great things about selling your paintings is that it feeds the cycle of you being able to stay a painter. So what sort of an artist am I? Well, I prefer to use art, as I said, to tell stories because I'm a closet writer. <laughs> and I've always been a storyteller, even from as a little kid. My human nature has been that Little kid, you know, the one who wants to jump on the back of art or anything as if it's a big mad rodeo horse and take it for a ride to see what'll happen. I love trying stuff out for its own sake. I'm an explorer and it shows in my early life adventures well before I started actually painting. I was exploring. I was sucking up new experiences and adventures that were out of the ordinary. I didn't want to have an ordinary life. And, you know, sometimes that got me into quite a bit of danger, but. I followed through a most extraordinary life, actually. I was raised in um, a man's world, which was full of sporting people. And then later on, I spent 10 years in the Australian outback in um, bush camps, pretty much in very remote places. We, we slept in swags and lived in tents and uh, right out the back of nowhere for a long time and, and didn't have any power, water, uh, no refrigeration, so you know we used to dig a hole 
in the ground to keep our potatoes cool. It was pretty raw life for 10 years prior to me coming back to civilization. I was actually, you know, I grew up in the city, but left there when I was 16, as you'll see in my CV. But that period of time I spent out there in the desert for 10 years, I developed a very, I guess, a bit of a unique uh, perspective and my focus on what the authority in life was moved to the natural forces because that's what dictated whether or not I stayed alive. It gives you a sense of certainty and confidence that no matter what happens, you can survive. I had a great advantage through that strange early, uh, those early years of not being thwarted by the furrowed brow of what society said you can and can't do. That just wasn't even there. So perhaps that was a pretty unique start. So it was a little bit of a funny turn for a young woman. So the 10 years that another young woman would have, maybe artistic young woman would have spent in college and uh, the, all those sort of places, I actually spent out there sharpening knives and and putting in fence posts and, you know, killing food for my, my dinner um, and many other strange things. The 10 years I spent in the outback definitely influenced the subject matter of my paintings for a good 20 years and occasionally still the subjects come back into my work because it was just real life for me. This is actually what happened and it made a, a huge impression. So I wasn't reporting in a fantastic way, fantasizing about the lifestyle. It was real and the characters that I was involved in, sometimes extremely eccentric, were actually real. <laughs> so for viewers of my work, especially my earlier work, I think that authenticity did come through. That really pushes home my thoughts on how an artist should paint their work. I, I really think whatever your experiences are, it's to paint that story authentically as it really happened. But what an artist can do with their imagination is make those experiences more mythical. We can really amplify the character of the experiences that we had through our ability to basically wield reality with the brush. It's a, an incredible tool, it's an incredible gift to be able to paint. And that society accepts this, it seals the deal. If you have the instinct to paint, you really must. And your frustrations around it, once you've learned a few trade tricks or skills, will be alleviated once you start reporting honestly from your experiences plus your imagination, that equals good art. So what your value is as an artist is your interpretation of what happens in life. That's where you stand up and you make a difference to how people perceive the world. I often had young uh, artists come to me when they'd finished their art degrees when I was living up in Broome and they'd come in all degreed up, amazing intelligence about art and say, okay, so I've just spent all these years, how do I actually become an artist? <laughs> and so what they were saying to me is how do I make money as an artist? So that's something that I think came very naturally to me because I was already a bit entrepreneurial, so I didn't really think about it all that much. I didn't, because I didn't go to university to study art, I actually learned, I self-taught, and I learned through reading other artists' work, observing it. I learned from other artists who were friends and taught myself. I mean, when you say you're self-taught, you're kind of not, because you really are learning from the observation of other art and paintings, and you don't need the academic stuff to actually become a good painter. So right from the very beginning, I wasn't hung up like the university kids were with all those uh, tut tuts about you're a sellout if you sell your work. It just wasn't even there. That gave me a huge advantage. So what you'll find with me is that I am pretty direct about what the way I teach. I'm not holding anything back. I'm just gonna give you everything I got. <laughs> The way I see it, there's no point carrying what I know to the grave. I love that saying, and it seems to work for me right now, that a society grows great 
when men plant trees whose shade they'll never sleep under. I have to share what I know before I leave. There's no point dying a mystery. Being an artist, no matter how many paintings one has done, is most certainly no qualification to be a teacher, I have learned. In fact, most artists find it quite difficult to hand over their goods or their secrets. Painting can be quite a sacred process for a lot of people. I know a lot of my artist friends said to me when I started teaching, well, you know, you've spent all those years you know, building up your business and you do very well, why would you actually open up the box and hand over all the how-tos? <laughs> well, there was more than just money motivating me with that. I struggled with this very same issue about should I give up all my secrets, if you like, and start teaching? And the way I dealt with that to just see how I would go is I started teaching live workshops. I thought I would just do a run of them here in Perth to see if I was cut out for helping others with their creativity. You soon work it out, it doesn't take long. After all, all I'd done with my own art was used it to serve my own creativity, which of course, you know, you could say is serving others because other people get to enjoy that. I think it's because I actually exhausted my own needs as an ego by really doing well in what I did and getting to a part, I guess a pinnacle of pricing was how I worked it out, that I felt really satisfied about that aspect that I, I thought I did really well. And it was time for something new, a new challenge. How could I actually serve more people? It's a very different process when you turn around and say you're going to help other people to expand their creativity and possibly become you know, really terrific artists who are commercially viable. It turned out <laughs> with that experiment of teaching live workshops that I loved it. It was absolutely exhausting, but deeply satisfying to see even the beginners achieve almost the same results as the experienced artists. And to see the experienced artists grow and expand. I knew that this was the thing that I'd been looking for to really, I don't know, just put the cherry on top of my life as an artist. As corny as that sounds, it was all about giving back. <laughs> yeah, I know. Despite having the dream job that I've had to be an artist, you know, making a decent living with no cafe work, I, I needed to actually find a way to serve others, as it turned out. I found that teaching really satisfied that need. It's absolutely wonderful. I just love it. What I love the most is seeing people's results. That just blows my mind, especially when I see the variations of what they do. On art and my way of teaching, I actually love the act of creating itself, be it just ideas, you know, writing or cooking, building, doesn't matter. I think that we're at our happiest human beings when we're making, we're the makers. The joy that that can bring, it's like a healing, you know, where we can be productive. It could even just be growing vegetables. It's just incalculable. The way it makes you feel, it makes you so much happier. People end up getting depressed because they're not doing anything usually except sitting there watching TV or something and they're not actually making anything. We talk about art therapy, but I think all art is therapeutic. And my very closest friend is an art therapist and she agrees with me because she's, she was an artist for 30 years before she found uh, her calling in doing art therapy where she's helping others and giving back in that way. I know I'm not the best artist in the world. In fact, I have zero interest in being that. It was simply never on my wish list. What I loved about art when I discovered it was that it allowed me to express myself in a way that I really wanted to. When you think about it, there's very few places that in our society where you can actually do that, you know, where you can actually express yourself with no limits. Just imagine that, you know, you go running down the street acting like a, a bear, you know, you'll be locked up. <laughs> in fact, art or the discovery of drawing saved me as a young girl from basically going insane. When I discovered I could draw my way out of my rage and frustration, I was pretty much free because it meant that I didn't have to actually let it boil up inside. There's many different kinds of artists 
as there are different kinds of human beings. Contrary to some generalisations out there that artists are, you know, all cappuccino, slurping, moody, existentialists sitting in cafes, <laughs> we come in as many varieties as there are sock colours, perhaps. To mention just a few here, just the different types that I know, based on my arty friends, we've got like, you know, perfectionists who strive to emulate nature exactly, you know, get that everything just to look, it looks real, more real than life. They're amazing artisans. They're pretty much copying nature. And those people are just not interested in making up something from what they see. You know, they're not interested in making a story up. They just want to make that look exactly what it is. That's their goal. That's like chalk and cheese to someone like me who only wants to make something look semi-real so that that serves my story. So we have different masters as artists. And then there's the more emotionally driven artists who see art as a kind of extension of their heart and they can they just open up their veins on the canvas like that writer used to say I could go on and on but I'll save that for another day but don't forget all of you artists out there especially those early in your career as artists we often go through chameleon like transformations where we try on all the different types of hats from you know abstract indifference to you know, giving the blood donations on canvas to trying to paint an eye as if it's gonna turn around and follow you through the studio. That's how we learn. We just emulate and we copy until we work out who we are. It's so similar to life. You, know, we, it, it, you don't have to be an artist to understand that analogy. We'll pick up a mentor and go along for the ride. Then we'll you know, jump off and we can let go of that mentor's hand and then we'll go find a new one or even hold our own hand on our trance towards you know, our independence as an artist. If you come along to learn with me, to allow me to mentor for you for a little bit, I want you to become strong in many different areas of art, not just one. Then you can work out what you love best and follow that more closely as you go along in your art career. Once the exploring is done, I need new territory. Sometimes the results of my explorations don't end well and it ain't that pretty, but mostly it's, it ends in a discovery of just what I can do and if I give it a shot. I've not died of thirst yet in the desert, but I did come close a couple of times. So my motto is keep squeezing life and experience as hard as you can while you can.